I'm here at the Miami Breast Cancer Conference, and you know, as a patient, I know that there are a lot of questions. I know you have a lot of questions, and what we're really excited about with this channel is being able to give you access. Access to the doctors, to the new technologies, to the answers that will help you in your journey. So I'm happy that I'm able to take you inside and get the answers to your questions. Come on, let's go. This is a room that essentially has a lot of booths where we will find all the latest technology in the diagnosis and the screening and the treatment of breast cancer. Hi, how are you? I'm Joan London. So we have a lot of women uh, that are asking us questions on Facebook. We put it out there yesterday, and we got many, 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 many questions. And uh, here, you want to just tell us what Lori said? This is a Lori. So Lori from Facebook is asking, what is the best method for dense breast tissue checkups pictures-wise? Is ultrasound the only method to improve radiological information other than mammography? Uh, no, so it's a very good start. It's I would start there because there's no radiation involved. Uh, MR is good as well, but then again, you're going to see more stuff. So there's a lot of discussion that needs to happen there, but ultrasound is a very good place for dense breast tissue because we can see cancers really well. But in the past, ultrasounds have it's been very first technician dependent. It really depends on the training of the technician that's doing it, even the machinery uh, that's Our being used. Our time of the day, how many patients are waiting. So there's a lot of uh, components that are uh, go with the handheld screening. And it's the probe is small, so you can miss areas. It's a lot of stress on the person doing the study. So um, is the new automated ultrasound by GE going to solve some of those issues? Yes. So the problem with screening currently with the handheld is that it's not reproducible. It's time consuming. It takes 45 minutes. Yeah. Anxiety level of a woman goes up. And it's only as good as I am or my machine is at any given time. And I might not send you the same way two hours later. Yeah. So we want to make it easy. Image quality being number one. Efficient, reproducible from year to year. And cost effective. Cost effective. So this is the same as any kind of ultrasound. Uh, okay. So there's, they can use the CPT code. Some insurances pay for it, some not. So we need that's another, another challenge thing we that we'll need. have to meet. Exactly. So, so this just goes right down over the, the woman's right breast. Right the woman, the probe moves inferior to superior. There's a few views that we do that are standard, but they can be modified for different breast types. And then what happens is the images are all kind of put together in a data set. So you're virtually rescanning. So radiologist that comes to the workstation, and I'm going to pull a study. Up. So now what we had was, what happened in this case was the probe kind of scanned through inferior to superior. We got all these views and this is a very dense breast. And just for our audience, um, the problem with women who have dense breast tissue is that when you have a mammogram, they say it's kind of looking, it's like looking for a snowball in a snowstorm. So this is why those women, and about 40% of women have dense breasts, might need an ancillary test. The big conundrum is what is that ancillary test? And where would someone find out? Where would a woman find out where they could get this? Because there's so, not that many of them around the country No, yet. there are not that many. I know GE is coming out with a site where you can go to the GE website and you can see where they are. Uh, so, And they would look for automated breast ultrasound. So that's what it's called, an automated yes. breast, breast ultrasound. ultrasound. Are and we going to see a Vinia, lot more of these all over the country I'm hoping. Soon? That's our goal. That is our goal, yes. Because we've got to get the, the cost the cost has to come in so that the insurance carriers will, will pay for this. Right. Uh, but we have to figure out a way for the women who need this test, who have dense breasts. 40% of women in the U.S., but you say like 75% 75 75 of women in overseas. overseas. Yeah. So it's Depending really a huge global issue. One thing I'm definitely learning here at the Miami Breast Care Conference is that there are so many new technologies available to women. But as one uh, doctor just said to me, it's, you know, these days, doctors don't always have the time to try to lay out every single option available. And quite often, you know, they suggest something and women just say yes, because it seems that you're really kind of, not forced, but there's, you're, you're 
you need to make your decisions like in two weeks. These are incredible decisions you're making and I can tell you from personal experience, you're almost catatonic in those two weeks right after hearing those words, you have cancer. So, you know, on this channel, we're really going to make sure that we find out what all the options are so that you can be educated yourself and know what to ask for.